Welcome back to another episode of Ruthless TV, where I break down Tyler Perry's hit cable series, Ruthless, scene by scene. Tonight, I want to talk about the big crossover between The Oval and Ruthless. It looks like we may be um, embarking upon uh, mid-season finales for both shows, actually. And things are looking pretty interesting on The Oval. Now, we don't see much crossover. Actually, we don't see any crossover at all um, on Ruthless, but we do see a lot of crossover when The Oval airs on Tuesday nights. So tonight's episode is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to go back to when Barry made a post on his social media page, and he was making a plea for Callie, his daughter. Well, Daikon somehow got the message <laughs> in the thick brush of the wilderness at the Rockadushi compound. Now, you know, Daikon, he's got like the whole CNN news technology right inside of his trailer. <laughs> so he gets Barry's message and decided to go and take a visit to Washington. Now, Daikon did not forget that the compound is losing money. So he decided to use Ruth to blackmail Barry and basically tell Barry that they will give him his daughter if he turned over the money. Now, the money that they're talking about is money that Ruth had when she was out in the free world. And before she joined the compound and took her daughter, she hid over $100,000 in Barry's room, right? And uh, looks like, I don't know, maybe she may have been trying to frame him or something because there was a huge knife, a bloody knife that laid in the box with the money. So anyway, she wants Barry to get the money and give it to the Rakadushis in exchange for their daughter, Callie. So Daikon gives Barry a call and he tells him to meet him in the parking lot to get Callie. Now upon Barry's arrival, um, Daikon throws a bag at his feet and tells him to open it. And Barry is very hesitant. He's like, you know, what's wrong with you guys? You guys are crazy. You know, I'm not opening this bag. And um, one of the Rakadushi cult members walked over and uh, told him to go ahead and open the bag because his baby girl was in there. And then Barry, Barry says, you know, if I open the bag and my daughter's in this bag, then you're dead. I'm going to go to the police. You're, got, you're a lot of um, sick, sick SOBs, right? So he's just out here all in the wilderness by himself, no protection, no backup. He's just out, just him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway... He opens the bag and the bag is stuffed with, it looks like uh, some of Callie's clothes and I don't know, a doll's head or something. It was kind of quick, you know, so I couldn't really see what was in the bag. But anyway, it may have just been her sweatsuit or some of her belongings or something. But Barry threw the bag back at him and he said, you know, uh, Daikon says, if you keep looking for Callie, that um, this bag will be sent to you. Then Daikon told Barry um, that he could take him to Callie. And then he said that Callie was inside the van. So Barry looks inside the van and there sat Ruth just <laughs> all alone sitting there inside the truck. And then she told him um, that when she joined the Raku that she had money and that she wanted Barry to give them the money so that um, he could get his daughter back. Then Barry said that he hadn't seen any money. Then it kind of went back and forth. But then it ended with, he said that he would bring the money and he wanted to know when and where. And then Daikon said, you know, I'll let you know when and where. And then Barry turned around and <laughs> they were like, <laughs> Daikon was like 30 deep with um, other Rakadushi cult members. Like they were just standing there. <laughs> like, where did they come from? They just, I guess they just appeared, you know, magically. <laughs> just crept up from the woods or something but he had about 30 members with him and um you know they said you know thanks for coming out or whatever and they all got back in the van and and they left then um after this barry gets home and then he's sitting at the table thinking um and his dad comes in 
And then he tells his dad about his meeting with the Rakadushis. And um, he told him that, you know, of course, he needs to get the money to them tomorrow. And then Richard, um, Richard is his dad. He said, you know, well, I want to go with you. But Barry wants to go alone. Uh, you know, again, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's on Barry's mind, but he's trying to do all this alone without any backup. And he's just this crazy for doing that. But anyway... Then his mom enters the room and she's actually the, the reason why um, Callie is gone in the first place because she allowed Ruth to come in to see Callie after Barry told her not to allow her in the house. But she allowed her in anyway, thinking, you know, Ruth is sweet and she's so nice and it's her mom, you know, all those things. And then she lets Ruth in and then Ruth comes in, you know, again, 30 deep. She had about, you know, I don't know, maybe five or six other cult members with her and they kidnapped Callie. And then that was the beginning of um, their turmoil, if you will. But anyway, after that, um, the story just kind of flipped back to the Oval Dialogue. So, it, you know, it kind of ended after that. Then we also had a, a couple of quick scenes with Dale. Y'all remember Dale from the fresh food section <laughs> at the, um, the supermarket. But anyway, um, he's laying up with Killer Kyle and, um, you know, gotten himself into all kinds of trouble, you know. But anyway, I'm not sure how instrumental... Um, he's going to be now that um, Barry has met with Daikon himself. So I don't know how helpful he's going to be at this point, but we'll just have to wait and see. Then we um, cut to another scene that has the, uh, the cult members um, entering into a cabin um, where, you know, once they got into the cabin, he let Bobby know that he had escaped. He and a couple of other people had escaped. Initially, he told Bobby that he was alone, but then um, Bobby's partner went around back and found two more people that were looking out um, for the guy that escaped. So anyway, he said that they escaped from the Rakadushi. So we have three escapees on the loose. I think it's going to be a little bit more than that because he did mention his daughter and he told them that they were um, hungry and they needed help. And um, Bobby, of course, is willing to help them and, you know, wanted to just give them a bag of groceries and, and, you know, send them on their way, which is what he did. But his partner, he wasn't really feeling the same. He wanted to shoot them or I don't know what he wanted to do, but he didn't want to give them anything and he didn't want to let them, them go either. So um, anyway, in the end, Bobby gave them the bag of food and they left. And then um, that that was pretty much it for um, for that scene which was the last scene um, that included members of Ruthless. And that's pretty much it, you guys. It's really late, so I'm going to um, go ahead and end this recording. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to wait to see what happens. Uh, you know, I'm not really into the timeline thing, you know, about if it's before Tally kills herself or after she kills herself or if, you know, because we don't see any of the interactions on Ruthless, so we really don't know where um, the oval is time wise all right but either way um, if you haven't liked the video already please like share and subscribe to the channel um, liking the video of course puts this in front of other ruthless fans so help me grow the ruthless family and um, like the video and share the video thank you so much to you guys that are tuning in and i'll see you on the next one